Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So lately I've been playing Valheim, this is the huge hit of the moment. I even made a video on 14 game design lessons you can learn from it, and one of the reasons why the game is so successful is because the simple actions are so satisfying. One of those actions is chopping down trees. You hit the tree with the axe, and after enough hits, the tree gets cut and split into a stump and a log, and then the log starts falling down with accurate physics. Then as it falls down, it can also hit other trees and damage them, and if there's enough damage, then those also fall down, and so on and so on. And of course, if you happen to be unlucky enough to be below the tree as it falls, then you're a goner. This is actually really easy to make, and it greatly improves the feel and believability of your game. So let's see how we can do that in this working demo that I have here. Let's see it in action and then inspect the code that makes this work, it's super simple. But before that, do you want to learn how to make games from a veteran in the games industry? Then check out this video's sponsor, Jason Wyman, who makes some great game development courses. They are all extremely detailed and very well planned with expert live support whenever you need help. As a special deal, you can get the CodeMonkey course bundle, which includes not one, but all three courses for the price of one. It's a great guided path that will teach you how to make games from beginner to advanced. Learn all about C Sharp with the Programmer course, then master Unity along with all of its tools, and finally dive deep into the Code Architecture course where you will learn how to structure your games and write good clean code to help you make even better games. Jason is a veteran in the industry with many years of experience working on large teams and very complex AAA projects. Through the course you also gain access to an exclusive Discord server where you can chat and share ideas with fellow students. Also, as a bonus, if you pick up the course bundle through the link, you get Steam keys for all of my games as a nice free bonus, along with a mug, hoodie, and discount on future courses. So, if you want to learn how to make games, check out the link in the description. So here is my working demo showcasing this system. I've got my basic character with some simple actions. Making the logic for all of this was actually very simple. What took the most time to build this demo was really just finding the assets and animations to make it look good. So I can see all of the trees around me, and if I approach them and I attack, I can start chopping them. As soon as I hit, you see the damage pop-ups. I actually cover that in another video. And when I deal enough damage, the stump gets separated from the log, and now look at that, it starts falling down. So the tree fell down, and as you can see, it's using accurate physics. So I've got the stump, I've got the log, and the log is now stuck on another tree. And now if I hit the log, it will break into two pieces. So hit it, hit it again, there you go. The log breaks into two pieces, those fall, and so on. And now if I hit one of these pieces, now they get completely destroyed. And the stump as well, if I hit it, I can also hit it and just basically destroy it. So all of this is really just some super simple interactions and a bunch of prefabs. So I hit it, I deal enough damage, and then the tree gets cut. They start falling down, they start dealing more damage, falling some more, and there you go. So it's just some basic interactions, but it looks pretty great. Here is the exact same demo, just without the visuals, so you can see just the logic in action without any distractions. So I've got my little character, I can move around, I can approach and I can attack this tree. And as soon as I do, it gets cut and split between the stump and the log, and the log starts falling. And as it falls down, any collisions that happen deal damage. So I cut it down, and if it happens to hit another tree, then deals damage to that tree, and if they hit enough, they might cause that other tree to fall down, and so on. Then on the log parts, if I hit them, and the log half just vanishes, and same thing for the stumps, if I deal damage, then they just vanish. So super simple logic. Okay, so let's see how it works. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. The first thing to do is to identify where I'm actually hitting. So for that, here is my player script. It plays the animation, and at a certain point in the animation, I have this function being called. So what this does is it finds objects within a hit area. For the hit area, it uses a game object reference right here. This is how I can position it in the world. So here in the editor, I've got my player game object, then inside I've got the actual character, and then inside I've got the root, and I've got my hit area right in here. So I can move this around if I want to have the player damage a different position. Then on the logic, as you can see, I'm doing a simple physics overlap box, which returns an array of all the colliders within this area. And then I simply cycle through all the colliders, and then I try to get a component of this type, iTree Damageable. This one is an interface, and here it is, it really just has one function. I covered the interface in detail in another video, so go check it out. They are super useful, essentially they'll let your code work with the interface instead of a specific object type. 
So all the logic that I have here works both for the tree as well as for the tree log, the tree stump, the tree log part and so on. As long as the object implements that interface then it works with it. So the physics cast looks for all the objects with that interface and then simply calls the damage function. Then just want some particles to make it look good and also a damage pop-up which I covered in a previous video. So that's pretty much it for the players. You can see just a physics cast and then calling a simple function. Then over here in the editor I can inspect each tree individually. So there you go, this is my scene. And then on each tree it has a simple capsule collider, just a solid object, a solid collider. And then it has this tree script, let's see it. So here the first thing you see is that it implements that interface. And then you also see that this tree has a health system. This is the same system that I made on the very first video on this channel. So I've got the health system, then I also have the type. So these are the various types that make up the whole tree system. So there's a full tree, there's a log, there's the logs turned in half, and there's the simple stump. So I'm just using these types just to be able to reuse the script on every single one of those objects. And for the health system itself, then down here we simply have the function from the interface. So just damage and it passes it on to the health system. Then when it takes enough damage, the health system fires the on that event. And over here for the normal tree, just spawn some particle effects then spawn the tree log as well as the tree stump. So here in the editor we can see how the prefabs are set up. So here I've got my prefabs and for example let's see the tree. So there you go, it's got the tree visual, it's got the things that we just saw. Then I've got the tree log, so this is essentially the full log. As you can see it has the same tree script, just has a different tree type over here, just a basic gnome. It's got a rigid body and a capsule collider, so this is how it falls down with physics. Then there's a prefab for just a stump and another one for the log split in half. So as soon as the tree is hit, it gets converted into a tree log and a tree stump and essentially just the particles act like smoke so they kind of hide the transition. So here in front of me I got a tree and as I hit it, I hit it once, twice and three times and there you go, you see the particles, they hide the transition and it gets constructed into those two prefabs. So here that's really all it does. Just spawn the log above a certain offset using the transform up, so just it's a bit above and then just adding a bit of randomness to the rotation so it actually falls down. If it is perfectly on top then it doesn't actually fall. So just a bit of randomness and that's pretty much it. So next, the tree log. Here as you can see it has the capstone collider and the rigid body. And then it also has a physics material. This is in order to give it just a bit of bounciness. So if I select, there you go, bounciness is set to 1. We can see what it looks like if I just remove, so if I remove this and see. So if I go and I try to chop down the tree. And as it falls down, let's see the difference that the bounciness does. So as soon as it falls down, yep, look at that, that's not very satisfying. So as it goes down, yeah, it falls just like that. Whereas with it on, if I chop down the tree, there it is, it falls down and has a little bit of a bounce, so it looks a bit more natural. Then again, the log has this same script. So the log, the tree and the stump, they all have the health system and they all implement the interface. And then down here, there's a bit more to this system. This is the on collision enter. So this is the function that is fired when a collision happens between two objects. So here, when a collision happens, it checks if the object that it collided with also has the tree damageable interface. If so, then it also tests for the relative velocity magnitude. So this is how fast was that collision, just so that if it's a light tap, it doesn't actually cause damage. So it needs to hit with a bit of velocity. So when that happens, just randomize a damage amount, spawn a damage pop-up, and deal damage based on the interface. So using this function, it can deal damage to another tree, another log, or another stump, or anything. And then up here when it dies, that's the only thing that changes based on the tree type. So if it's a tree, it spawns a log and a stump. If it's a log, it simply spawns two half logs. If it's a half log, then it just gets destroyed, and the stump just gets destroyed. So here, as I chop down the tree, it gets spawned into a log and a stump. And as that log starts falling down, if it takes enough damage, if I hit it, and yep, there you go, it converts into two half logs, and then the half log takes damage and just gets destroyed. Same thing for the stump, hit it, and it simply gets destroyed. And over here for the player, it is also implementing that interface, so that's how that works. As the tree, when it hits with a collision, the player also has this, so it also deals damage to the player. So if I'm here and I start chopping down a tree, then I put myself below it. Okay, so let's see. As it falls down, and yep, it also damages the player. So here you can see the power of using interfaces. So I've got about five different object types in here, and they all use the same interface, so they all work as part of the same system without having to rewrite too much code. And with this, you can see just how simple this whole system is. It's just an interface to make it work, 
and it just has some very basic rules just spawning a bunch of prefabs and a bunch of particle systems just to hide transitions and yep look at this so here we've got a forest and it all works pretty great then some more things over here on the player for the animation it's got a simple animator and then over here on the attack just listening to the mouse button and sets the trigger on the animation and since I also wanted to make this demo work without any animations I made the head function based on a timer instead of directly linked to the animation then for the camera shake, as you can see over here, I've got a serialized field of type Cinemachine Impulse Source. So this is the tree shake, and over here when I've got a hit, I do tree shake and generate an impulse. So that screen shake is over here on the player, and inside I've got this object. And as you can see, it has the Cinemachine Impulse Source. So this is how you can very easily make some screen shake using Cinemachine. And for the camera itself, over here is the Cinemachine Free Look. This one is set up using Orbit so that I have a really nice third person camera. And then down here it simply has a Cinemachine Impulse Listener. So everything here is pretty standard. And then of course there are all of the visuals, so this is what took the most amount of time in building this demo. So most of it is from an environment asset pack, so all the trees, all the floor, the rocks in the background and so on. Then I use another one for the character itself. There's links in the description in case you want to see the asset packs that I use here. And then finally there's the post-processing volume. So here it is, the volume with all of these effects, so everything is pretty standard. So here with all the effects on and with all the post-processing off. So as you can see, post-processing by itself does a huge, huge difference. So just put it all together and over here is the working demo. I've got my character, I can move around, I can attack and start chopping a tree. I deal some damage and with enough damage, yep, there you go, the tree starts falling down. It falls down with accurate physics. Then if it hits something else, then it also causes some more damage. And if there's enough damage, then the other trees also fall and so on. So I can chop it all down and the whole forest starts falling down and looks pretty satisfying. Certainly a lot more satisfying than if you just hit a tree and suddenly you get some wood in your inventory. So I can cut it, I can destroy it, and yep, this whole system is very simple and it works pretty great. So if you just add a simple item inventory system on top of this, then you would have a nice working minigame. So as you can see, adding all of this is actually a very simple thing. All of the logic is very easy. But if you've played Valheim, then you know what a difference it makes. If that game just had trees vanish instantly, it would not be as satisfying as it is, and it would not have found as much success as they did. And don't forget to check out Jason Wyman's courses with the link in the description. Get the CodeMonkey bundle and enjoy all of my games as a free bonus. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.